Okay, everybody, welcome to this evening's uh, Coach the Tattle webinar. My name is William Harmon, uh, National Development Officer for Ladies Football with a remit for Coach Ed. I'm joined by my colleague all the way from down is Kiran Martin. Kiran, would you like to say hello? Yeah, how are we going, folks? You're all very welcome to this evening's webinar. So at opposite ends of the country, from Kerry right down to up the county down in the north. So yeah. Looking forward to it, Will. Good stuff, good stuff. So look, guys, as, as normal in general, we, uh, we we hope that the webinar will be no more than 70 minutes. We promise you it won't go any further than 70 minutes. And look, throughout the webinar, guys, if you have any questions, please just throw them into the chat function. We'll try our best to uh, observe same as we go through. But even if you're interacting with each other throughout the webinar, uh, it's fantastic as well. If you can't hear us or you're having issues with your, with your sound, just leave the webinar and come back in. So as you say, look, tonight's topic is looking at coaching the title on pitch activities. So we hope to get there soon regarding what can you do on the field to develop the tattle. As you said, my name is William Harmon and I'm with my colleague, Kieran Murta. So this is part of our winter uh, ladies football uh, coach education series. And as you see, we've done a few webinars already. They're all available on our LJFA YouTube channel. So if you get time over the coming weeks, please guys give a look at them. There's some very good webinars there. And as you see, we're on the coach of tattle tonight. We've one more coming up in improving tactics and patterns of play, which is probably centered around our, our level two program uh, on the 23rd of February. So we're looking forward to that. And then we have our Gail from other specific program for coaching sessions. So um, they're all up there on our LJFA YouTube channel if you ever get the opportunity. Okay, so by the end of this webinar and Previously, we've done a webinar previously as well, so we will be kind of covering some of those slides, but tonight we're going to have a lot more activities on this slide in terms of what can you do on the training pitch. So tonight we'll, we'll look at that, define what a good tattle looks like, or good contact looks like. We'll state the rules that govern ladies football in terms of deliberate contact and high, high, high uh, tattle as well in ladies football. We'll demonstrate how to coach a tattle. And I suppose that's the one thing we looked at in the registration sheet coming through prior to the webinar is the basics of how to coach a tattle, which is vitally important. And we're going to specifically look at when the opposition has the ball. So that's specifically what we're looking at tonight. And then we're going to go through a, a load of activities and drills that you can do in your sessions. And I think... Uh, Kiran, I think we have about, I'd say, 10 or 11 more 10 or 11, yeah, roughly, yeah, yeah, yeah. than we have in the last webinar. So hopefully you, you look forward to, good, to good progressions there. with them as well, wouldn't it? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So I suppose ultimately what are we trying to achieve is, is that consistency, everyone. And I suppose for that to happen, we need to have some sort of idea around the detail. So as you know, we have an LJFA rule booklet and that can be downloaded on our website. Um, there's the full rules, but also there's a coaches or, or a pocket rules booklet that goes through the, the rules in short. And I would advocate any coach here tonight to go onto our LJFA uh, website and download that for yourselves. But then there's get clarity around you know what are the rules and specifically around the tattle tonight you have that education so those are coach education courses tonight is the webinar and we also have an online rules refresher so there's 50 questions there on the rules of our game why not go on there someday and give it and give a look at that and see how you get on but if we get clarity around what we're doing and understand the detail around it, then hopefully we can get a bit more consistency and flow to our game. But I suppose at the end of the day, and I suppose, Kieran, this is important really into that, everybody's a role to play. We as coaches, the referees, and, and also educating the players. And there's a lot of good work, Kieran. I know you were on a webinar last night. There's a lot of good work being done with the referees in terms of trying to get that consistency as well. Am I right in saying that? Yeah, just well on that, the discussion came up last night and the tackle and... Like the the rule of the tackle and just in terms of how it's coached and what and I just I, I made the point that listen we're having a webinar tomorrow night with our with our coaches and on how to tackle and the definition of the tackle and and hopefully it'll then it'll have our coaches and thus then it'll have their referees on the pitch so everybody will be more clear in terms of the rule and the consistency of it so it'll help our coaches our players and our referees and as as you said about the game will hopefully flow much better. Exactly. And I suppose we can only control what, what we do ourselves, can't we? We can't really control what the opposition do or what the referee does. I suppose once we as coaches just control, if we can, uh, I suppose, develop our players and get our players to be better tacklers on the field to play, then we're doing our role and we're doing our side, our side of things. Uh, my colleague, Claire Dowdall, is doing great work with the referees at the present time in referee development. So we're all working together to get that consistency across the board. So we're just going to do a little poll, if you don't mind. I'm going to launch it now in a minute. And basically, how often do you coach a tattle in your coaching session? So in the, I'm going to launch it here now. So 
Is it every session sparingly or never? So please be very honest. How often do you coach the tackle in your sessions? I know there's coaches here that are involved with underage, under an eight, tens, twelves. I know there's coaches here that are involved in older age groups. And I know that there's coaches involved at adult inter-county level as well. So we have a, a real kind of, I suppose, plethora of coaches involved tonight. So it's coming through. It's very interesting. Uh, we still have about 50 people. Keep coming through, guys. We're nearly there in the end of it. Um, it's interesting to Kiran. Uh, what's your take on the, on the results so far? If you can see, you probably can't. No, you can't. I can't see. say whether you're because you're, you're you're the boss, you're the moderator. I can't say. So basically, what it's saying is that coaches here tonight, eighteen percent of nearly two hundred participants uh, practice the tattle in every session. Okay, seventy six percent do it sparingly. And 7% never coach the tattle in their sessions. I think that's interesting feedback in terms of, you know, the, the, the tattle technique. If I was to ask you, Kieran, how often would you coach the tattle in your, in your sessions? If I'm honest, William, I would say one in four. And that's, 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 that's the honest, because, you know, you get, you get held up on the tactics, the technical side, your conditioning, and sometimes it's maybe just neglected in, in, maybe one out of four training sessions and I hold my hands up and that's, that's being honest and something yeah. that's, you all probably need to, to, to readdress going forward. Yeah. In every session, I do it in every session, Kieran. I think it's vitally important because I feel as a coach that if we have the ball, we can, we can probably influence the game. If we don't have the ball, we can't. So how do we get the ball back as quick as possible? And we try and do that through good tackling and good teamwork. So, you know, I would practice it every session every session and i'll show you just a few ideas later on and how we can do that without overthinking it, if that makes sense so we're just going to move it on uh, and i hope if anybody has any questions or queries please guys throw out so we're going to look at you know tonight just what does good look like and i think that's important we have to know just kind of get an idea of what good looks like what are the rules that governs the tattle and then just key points around context as i said but before i move on i'm just going to launch one final poll here and if I was to ask you straight up, okay, in terms of, you know, which tattlers are the best tattlers and um, who would they be? So I'm just going to see, can I get it going here? If I don't, I'll ask you to do it um, yep. on, the, on the, oh yeah, here it comes. So I'm just going to put it up now in two seconds, guys. And I've launched it there. So tell me, in your team, if I was to ask you, who are the best tattlers in your team? Off you go, off you go. So who are the best, who do you feel as a coach in your team are the best tattlers and who should they be? This is a very interesting one. So I kind of put up four options like here on. Mm -hmm. I said de defenders, half backs, half forwards or midfielders. I said forwards are every player. So it's interesting. So keep it coming, guys. Good stuff. We're nearly there. We're over 200 participants tonight. So great yeah. to see such great numbers. You always get that uh, stereotypical one, uh, well, that the forwards are the latest and they're not prepared to tackle. Yeah. And after they get their score, they're, no, they're back and their, their chest is out and they're not even thinking about the next ball. So yeah, 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 I wonder if, uh, if the coaches think they got there. That... Yeah, so what is the, the results tonight are, okay, is that... Defenders, so coaches feel uh, defenders, 33%. 30, so a third of our participants tonight, our coaches tonight, feel defenders should be your best tacklers. Uh, again, another third feel that the half-backs, half-forwards, midfielders should be the best tacklers. 4% the forwards, which is interesting. And a third says every player. Now, that's very interesting. I, like, Kieran, what's your thought on that one in terms of who do you feel should be the best tacklers on your team? Well, your last line of defence, usually William is your, your full back line and your, usually your cornerbacks in my team are, are probably the most tenacious and best tacklers that I've come across. But yeah. in a real world, you'd want one, one to 15 doing, doing all the same job and, and, and doing, the, doing their job at, from corner forward right back to corner back. So, yeah, you'd like to think all one to 15 could, could tackle well in your team. Yeah, I, I agree. In my opinion, it's just my opinion, everybody. And we're just giving our, like, our opinions. It doesn't mean they're right or wrong. And I think that's important to note. I think everybody, I think we've over 200 people on the call. So everybody has their ideas and thoughts. But we're just, you know, just reflecting what we're discussing tonight. In my opinion, as a coach, I think all players should be good tacklers. Because I feel if we lose the ball on the far side of the field, in the corner of the pitch, I want my corner forward tackling as good as the player in, in corner back. So in, that's just my opinion i feel every player involved in my team should be good tattlers so therefore when i'm focusing on tackling i focus on everybody being a good tackler and we'll probably show a reason how that comes into importance shortly as well so thank you very much guys for your interaction so far so we're going to move it on so what's the rule 
Okay, so what's the rule in terms of ladies football? I'm sure you're all aware of the rule of what is the tackle in ladies football. So a player holding the ball into the body cannot be legally dispossessed. And I'll show you a picture of that in a minute. So when the ball is in the body, technically, she cannot be dispossessed. It's a foul. So any attempts to, sh to, to try and get the ball from, from the player while the ball's in the body, it's technically a foul. It's a foul against the player tackling. So what are we learning as coaches? What are we learning as coaches on this? So we're learning that when we're coaching our players on the field of play, we're learning that our tacklers they need to time it right at the right time, okay, in, the, in possession of the ball. So when the ball is out of the body or when the player presents the ball, then that's when we advocate you tackle the player. So it could be tackling, could be bouncing, could be soloing, or when the ball is presented from the body. That's when we advocate you present, uh, tackle the player. The ball must be knocked by one hand or both hands, open hand, not a closed fist when you're tackling. And that's key to know tonight. So these are just small things to be aware of as a coach. Just on that little story in terms of open hand, that's one of the things that the referees brought up last night, the chopping, that chopping effect with the closed fist coming in, especially when the ball is in the body. But even when the ball is presented, you still can't chop. You have yeah. to, as you say, the open hand has to be, has exactly. to be there to dispossess the ball. Very good. So I would think there, guys, that's a very good point Kiran made, okay? So it's vitally important that we're very much aware that the chopping, so sometimes we could be pawing or chopping the arm, which is a foul as well. But we'll go through it. And Kiran, let me know if there's anything coming through the chat. I yeah, will try yeah, our best. Keeping, we'll try our best to answer it. I'm going to show you a video, guys. And I, I know this is in the previous webinar, but we're just going to show this one as well because we feel you need to understand, we need to all understand what good looks like. So I'm just going to play it first. I hope everybody can see this. So let's look at this again. Let's look at it again. I'll pause as we go along and we'll take it from here. Okay, look at this now. So everybody that's watching here tonight, give a look at the Mayo player. She's 20 meters behind the Cork player. Phenomenal, 20 meters behind. And she still dispossesses the player. But as you say, guys, watch it. Watch. And Kieran, I, 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 and give me your thoughts on this one if you want. Yeah, just on, on the Mayo's. Positioning. Sorry, sorry. I'll go back. Yeah, yeah. The, the wing half back, the number five. She was taking the chance from the the court kick out. She was trying to push up. The kick out went probably too far ahead of her, and then she was totally out of position. Yes. So she was she was on the 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 back foot already, as you can see straight away. Bang, the yard she has to make up. But you can see the intent, the effort, the desire. Will that she didn't want to let her teammates down. She could have just stopped in half way lane and say, "Here, let them go up and score a goal or a point." But look at her eyes, that hand getting in. You can just see the time bang and she just pops it out perfectly. Unbelievable. So she's, she's done the hard yards. She's got the time. She's got the hands, the eyes, everything that you want. And then number seven is going to pick up the brick wall and hopefully launch a counter attack. So I it's, think it's phenomenal. Isn't it, now, she could have very well given her foul away there. Ball and dead ball, and, and there's a research done by Glenn Kelly at the moment in terms of where scores are coming from. And a lot of 70% of the efficiency is kicking over the bar from dead dead balls around the D area. That's a free straight away inter county level or E level. But look at the the, the the tackle, and you know it's a good tackle, but look at the direction of the ball. The ball is going away from yeah, the goal. The goal. So it just shows you the tackle was phenomenal in terms of her effort. Mm -hmm. But she ran 20 meters to make up the ground and still had the wear it all, the desire and the commitment to do a very good tackle for her teammates, which I thought was just a phenomenal video. And someone I would say you should talk to all our players, really. And probably will from another point of view, she's keen to get forward as well. Number five, from an attacking point of view, she was she was on the front foot to get forward. And then she realized, here, I'm out of position here. And it, it was it's an excellent an excellent clip to show any of your, your young girls at your clubs or, or your county scene. We're going to look at this one now. So this is another kind of a close. It's our latest clip. Look at this. Look at this clip. This is really like really close up. And, and look at the desire. She's off. You know her her commitment. The ball is out of the body. Now she's gets the near hand, pushes away without falling. Now she's falling to the ground. But look at this. We have. I, I'm going to play this real time just to give you an idea of the speed regarding same. So we're just going to look at it again. I'll play it again full. 
look at that for an outstanding in terms of the desire, the commitment to tackle well without giving away. That's just, just in front of the goals. Great. Another great example of good fouling. We're good, or a good uh, tackling. Here's another one, the Dublin player. So we're going to look at the Dublin player in blue tackling the, the Galway player. So well, let's watch this one. So let's watch it again. Let's do it again. Well, because yeah, I had a question in the, one of the, the Q&A as well, and it's from, from the previous clip, and one of the coaches just observed uh, the Mule number five was at the near hand tackle, and on this clip here, you yes. can see that it so wasn't I, the near hand coaches. Yeah. So, well, there's nothing wrong with that. No, I, think, you know, I think that's important to note here, and we will probably advocate later on what we would advocate. What we would advocate, we're not saying it's the right or wrong, we're just advocating. But in the previous clip with the Mayo girl, it was a near hand she used. Mm -hmm. Okay. But in this clip here with the Dublin player using the far hand. To show it again, well, just because yeah, so, just to... I just showed you again, guys. Yeah. Just watch it. So we'll and show it you imagine. again. So she's using the far yeah. hand, but the same principles apply, Kieran, in that the ball is out of the body. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now she's able to tackle. Yeah. Her, her, her far hand is not touching the back, so she's not going to be very far. And she's using the far hand. Yeah. So, and you can, see she's, she's also not jumping in either, but she's just, her balance is correct. Everything, she's maintaining a steady balance and she's just going to rub that player just before she kicks the ball. So therefore, you can tackle with both hands. A good tackle is when you tackle the ball, not the player. Mm -hmm. A good tackle where it's near a far hand. Now, we'll show you in a few minutes what we would advocate in terms of in ladies football, what would be the best tackle technique to use. But we're not saying it's the end or be all. We're just giving, we want you tonight just think about all these things, guys. So that's just another clip of good tackling, different technique. You can let me know if there's any on the QA as well. Yeah, yeah and just keep an eye on as well. Yeah. So, Let's look at this well, one here. Yeah, well, I'm just going to take us in here. Uh, good proud old Uh Remember the other show years ago? I'm showing my age catchphrase, Ray Walker. <laughs> yeah, say what you see, say what you see, folks. So, from yes. just in the chat box, I want you to comment who is uh, who's filling who is, as the caption says, guys, at the top. Uh, we thought we'd add this for a wee bit of wit and a wee bit of uh, laughter. So, who's filling who in the picture? So in the chat function, guys, tell me who's fouling who, but who's really fooling who, if that makes sense. So in the chat function, and Kiran, you can probably... Yeah, keep an eye on here if you will. Yeah. Two or three comments that might come out there, Kiran, you might just say it, you know, what's coming back there before we give the perceived yeah. answer. And perceived, it's only yeah. a perceived answer because, yeah. So who's fooling who here, even though two players are... One is a player in the ball and, and the body and the other player is tackling, but who's really probably tackling or tackling well? Yeah. The so uh, they're both fouling. Uh, the girl has the ball and body, but charging. Okay, yeah. So the girl on the, the right hand side is charging to the girl's uh, chest. You so let's go. There? Let's let's go to that one. Look at it there, guys. Everybody, look at it there. So the girl has the ball and the body. So we know from the rules, she's the ball and the body. She can't be tackled. Okay, we know that. Okay, and the girl who's tackling her has both hands on the body, so she probably would be called for a foul. Because the rule states you can't tackle a player when the ball is mm -hmm. body. And I would always just say here on this point, because it's just coming to my head, when you're coaching girls in your coaching sessions, guys, I would strongly advocate that you always coach the girls to bring the ball into the body after winning the ball. So if you get a high catch, bring the ball into your body, because you can't be tackled when you come down. When you win the ball, bring the ball into your body, take four steps and go. Take another, bounce the ball, take four steps and go. Bring the ball back into your body, because you can't be tackled. But look at the girl in the white. What is she doing? She's using her opposite hand to push or her elbow to push the uh, tackler away. That's a foul in ladies football. Okay, so three things the referee will look at there is the movement of the hand, the force and the intent. That's what he will or she will decide whether it's a foul or not. So look at it here. So if a referee is watching this, okay, how does he or she decide who's fouling first? So Basically, is who has committed the foul first? Did the girl with intent use the elbow to push away? Or was the girl who came in to try and tackle the player on the ball? So in that instance, the referee would decide on who fouled first will get the free. Now you got yeah, to rely on going... yeah. Sorry, will we question just uh, uh, is she screening or pushing away? Who initiated the contact? It's a hard one to call and not still picture. Well, it is a course. It is a course. And I know the, re the referee and, and there now has to make that split session decision, but the still picture here just to us, it shows the coaches both are committing fouls 
and it, technically the uh, the girl on the left is is going with the forehand. So forehand, but also yeah. think about what I just said there, guys. If like this is still picture, but if she has movement of the hand, if it's with force and intent, then it's definitely a push off. Referee deems that's a foul. But if she just has her hand up and there's no movement and she's just shielding, then that's a different story. But if she has movement with force and intent, then the referee will deem that a foul. Just something to be aware of. Yeah, just one of the coaches says the player in the ball most likely will get the benefit of the doubt. Well, we'd like to think the player in the ball will get the most benefit of the doubt because obviously the tackling, but we also have to watch. And the referees, in particular, in the, the recent championship, Kieran, and I know probably if there's a few coaches on here tonight, they pulled for a lot of that pushing off that was going mm. on. And um, so referees are actually becoming more aware of it. My colleague Claire Dowdall is really pushing on that with the referees and the officials in terms of watch the player who who's, doesn't have the ball, who has the ball. Because sometimes we always watch the player who doesn't have the ball. But sometimes the player on the ball could be fouling just as much. Give a look at this clip. And this we're going, uh, again, in the, in the, uh, the, the sure. form prior to it, looked at the, you know, the one-to-one. -one. How do we tackle a one-to-one -one player? So again, let's look at it. The Cork player has the ball in the body. So we know, okay, the Dublin player has the hand and the shoulder. That's, that, that could be given as a, as a foul. But what advice would you give? Now you know that the ball is in the, is in the body, right? Now you know that as a coach, I would put in the chat function. What advice would you give that defender if you were their coach after the game? Just throw it into the chat function. Now you know that the ball in the body, you can't be tackled. We know that, okay? But what advice now would you give the, the, the blue defender as a result, knowing that, okay, the ball is about What advice would you give that coach, uh, that player? Mm -hmm. if, before I give an answer, Kiran, maybe people control the chat function. What advice, yeah. would, you, what advice would you give, Kiran? I'm just looking at the chat function here a little bit. I'll answer you in a minute, Will. Yeah. Uh, I, I think you're holding off, Kiran. I think no, I'm not holding off. I'm keeping an eye on the chat for you. Uh, one of the coaches saying, next time, stand off and let her make the first move. Very uh, good. We'll, our we'll, timing. Okay, our timing, yeah. Another coach, Shielder, step across, avoid the potential high tackle. Very Could good. Be a high tackle there, yeah, with the right yeah. arm from the cross. Uh, Excellent. Well done, yes. Well done, yeah. 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 Back off and shadow the player, and we'll, we'll, we'll come to that later we'll on. We'll come to that later on. I think, I think that's the good one. I think she probably probably dived in too early. Yeah. Maybe maybe just kind of just, just pull the brakes for a second. Because I, I'm nearly thinking that the player in blue, in the red, or in red, might be a right footed player. She doesn't want to go down the left side. She wants to get onto her strong side. So she's going where she doesn't really want to go. So how, maybe there was no need to dive in in that scenario. Maybe it was, she want to hold back here, push her where she's going, and I'll wait till she ex presents the ball. So well done. Thanks, Kiran. And let me know. So what are we learning? Okay. What are we learning now before we go into all the activities? We're learning as, is that the best tackler is the patient tackler. Okay. The best hat. So wait your time. Wait the moment to get the hand in. Look at those videos earlier on. So I would always advocate that. Always try to get the player on the ball to make the wrong decision. So try and engage the player on the ball. And we'll show you a few activities later on. Try and get her to put her head down. So get close enough to get her head down. Okay. All right. So because they have to do something every time. So she has to do something every four steps. So time away for your tackle. That solar bounce. Tattle with confidence. So the ball is out of the body when the player is off balance, as we said. So that's what we're hitting there. And I also think as well, well, sorry, that it comes with experience. You know, yeah. repetition, we always talk about our tactics and how we're setting our team up. But repetition, repetition, repetition is very, very important in terms of tackling, getting a young girl, having the confidence how to block. Because it will come, I think, through time. You always maybe see a young girl who's maybe jumping in and fouling and she's not patient, she hasn't got time. She's maybe getting her three personal... Uh, fouls and then next minute you're, you're taking a walk so I think young girls will learn through time and experience that it will come but just through repetition on the training field and then train it and train it and it will it, it will improve as, as the weeks and months and the years progress you, you could start this at under sixes eights you know and I will show you that in a few minutes and I suppose the big thing here Kieran, is the big thing here is is really is that repetition. Our next webinar is about uh, patterns of play and tactics, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And, and we always talk about how do you, I suppose, initiate a game plan and all that kind of stuff. Well, you need to repeat it and repeat it and repeat it until it comes a habit. And when it yeah. comes a habit, you'll do things better. Go back to the poll earlier on in the night. This is interesting now. So we have nearly, what, 230 200, people? 200, 220, well, yeah. 220. Go back to the poll earlier in the night. And how many coaches said they don't do it every session? 
So how can our players be the best tattlers from 1 to 15 if we don't constantly practice, 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 practice? Make it a habit. So as we learned here tonight, wait for that contact. Wait for the ball out of the body until the bounces are solo or presented out of the body. Have the confidence in. Tell your girls, have the confidence in to, to tattle the player when she's off balance or whatever it may be. But body position is a key. And we go through activities now to help with all this. Body position is key as well. So I always say engage the player. Get her head down. Push her onto her non-preferred side. Push her down the line or away from goal. So delay her and deny her. Think about the Dublin defender in the blue. There was probably no need to tackle her in that sense to cork her because she had the ball in the body. So maybe if she just positioned her feet better and maybe just pushed her where she didn't want to go, she probably could have tackled her in four or five seconds time. That yeah. desire and commitment, and I think that's a big one in, in the one in Mayo. Mayo was that, yeah. that, that was the big one. The, the, the yeah. desire and the commitment to do the right thing at the right time at a higher pressure situation. Higher, right on the D. She could have given away a foul, but mm. no, I've got a guarantee she practiced that, practiced that. So, pra And you know what the desire and commitment will, you know, you can't coach it, you can't build that into your sessions. It's not a technical skill, it's not a technical skill, it's a willingness to die and do everything for your team to get back and it's it's, it's something that a quality that we need to ingrain in there are our young girls from a very very young age that's exactly. a team of that team ethos and working together as a exactly. team unit exactly and tackle smart so think about the the, the webinars we did uh, last what i think was uh, involving players and this is decision making getting players to think differently we're going to go through a few activities now in a few seconds how do we get them thinking differently thinking differently in terms of, okay maybe i don't have to engage here but maybe if I get her head down, push her where she doesn't want to go, my buddy's going to come in a few minutes and maybe we can dispossess her. So just a few ideas around that. So tattle the ball, not the person. A patient tattler is the best tattler. So we're going to look at scenarios. Let's go into the activities. Yeah. And we're going to look at from the side to side and running from a, a disadvantage. So if you're like that, that male player, running from uh, one to one. So if there's a player coming at you, what are things we could be looking out for and, and looking at there? And we're going to look at that kind of group defending as well. We kind of look at that as well. So we will and we show activities. But this is on our website. I'll just go through this fairly quickly in terms of we advocate the near hand tattle. Okay, in the chat function, why do you think we advocate the near hand tattle? So why do we advocate the near hand tattle as opposed to the far hand tattle? Even though the far hand can be as effective as the near hand, we're not saying that. But why are we advocating the near hand tattle in ladies football? Think about the rule now. Think about the rule of ladies football. Yeah, so there's a chance of fouling coming up, Will. Uh, there's a chance of fouling as well. More control, better balance. Brilliant. So our, our rules, guys, say that ladies football is non-deliberate contact. Non-deliberate okay. contact. That's, that's our rule. So if you use the far hand, more than likely the, 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 the near hand might go on the back of the player. So the referee might say foul. Okay. You won't have the same balance or you won't have the same reach in terms of reach for the ball. So that's why we advocate the near hand. We're not saying here tonight is the only tattle. We're just advocating in terms of better reach, better balance, and less likely to give away a foul, the near handed ladies football, because the rule state is a non-deliberate, or it's a, a, a not deliberate contact game. It's probably the most preferred. Okay, so let's give a look at it here before we move it on. So just, this is something you can show all your players again. Let's look at it. And three things you need to be aware of as a coach. What's the head doing? What's the hands doing? What's the feet doing? Eye on the ball at all times. Hand across, near hand, and always step across. I'll give you another small coaching tip that might be useful. I don't know. It might be, might be useful at all. But even before a player wins the ball, we always advocate your players to step across, to always go across the line of the defender or the, the opposition player to get across the body. So this is what we're trying to coach here, is trying to get across the body with your near hand, with your near leg, and try and tap that ball into your possession if possible. If not, tap it away, okay? So there are just a few things to be aware of. Kieran, I don't know, have you any thoughts? Yeah, yeah, it's just that's one thing I was going to mention, well, that you, you try and tap the ball into your own path rather than the, the, the ball player's path, because straight away, you're off to a disadvantage as well, again, because that forward could pick up possession and attack again, but if you... Uh, put the ball in your own path you're in the, you're, you could win possession then you're straight away launching a counter attack uh, just on this guys uh, we uh, we had uh, George Clooney flew in during the summer to take a couple of shots for us here and 
he's heavily involved in uh, ladies' football all over in the States, and he was down in Kerry one weekend, so we got him to take a couple of action shots for us. He's, so, he, he's, yeah. aged, he's aged well, George. So thanks, Kieran. I appreciate that introduction. <laughs> okay, guys, we're looking at one to one. We're going to give you a few tips regarding one to one. Thanks, Kieran. So tell me, if you're a coach and you're coaching the girls, okay, and a player is coming at you one to one, tell me what stance would you advocate with your players regarding a one to one scenario? So a player is coming at you, you're a defender. Tell me, A or B, put in the chat function again, A or Kieran. Tell yeah. me what's coming up there regarding A or B. What do what do coaches feel is the best dance regarding saying? Yeah, the majority of coaches are saying B and the, uh, where did you buy your socks from as well? Though? Yeah, no problem. I'll let you know, guys. I, I'll send you out my email there later on. I'll let they're, you know. they're on the money night. Well, they're probably yeah, giving us it tonight, yeah, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, look, what else are we doing? So, um, look at this. So, with the, with, the, with the square stance, guys, basically if a player is coming at you, if she goes left or right, you're caught square footed. It's going to be very difficult for you to maneuver the body to where you need to go, especially when you're going at a, at, at a fast pace. So angle, we always say advocate at an angle, uh, the body. So one hand in front of the other, the front hand is a tackling hand with the left leg, and the other hand is point to where you want the player to go. So you're kind of cheating a small bit on this one. So if a player's coming at you at 100 miles an hour, do you go at her at 100 miles an hour or do you go at and probably just pull the brakes and guide her to where you want to go? In the chat function again, guys, tell me what your thoughts are on that one. Tell me what your thoughts are. Now, in terms of charging, if a player is coming at you guys and she goes directly, if you're standing there and you don't move and a player comes directly into you, let's go back to the rule. If she's moving at pace with intent and force into you with the ball, then it's a foul against the person on the ball. Simple. Very simple. Okay. But if she's coming with you, lads, and she wants to go left or right, we say the angle is the best way to go about it. So tell me now, guys. Okay. Tell me um, in terms of B, in terms of the angle. Okay. Do you go at 100 miles an hour or do you go and just pull the brakes and then guide her, shock, jockey back to where you want her to go? Keep yeah. On, well, look, yeah. On the, chat, on the chat. Yeah. Well, a lot of the coaches are coming up with the same guide her to, to her weaker side, guide and shadow. Uh, Delay, which we'll talk about later on, delay and dispossess, pause and shadow. And it's probably, well, uh, probably something guide again. Sorry, getting just looking at the comments here. Yeah, so that I'm saying guiding to the weaker side. So yeah, the, and you, the, and the forward's weaker side, which you want to guide them on, then exactly. that's your opportunity. Is it always, I always say to players, and this is another little tip for you here, guys. I always say to your players, the first in the first five seconds when your player gets the ball, find out first what leg she kicks with. Now you already have information. So if you're a corner forward and you are the defenders coming out and she's right legged, she'll want to go into the center. Why don't you push her to the far side? Different. So if and players probably, are not professional both sides. Yeah, and probably at club level, we all know the opposition players, you know, from A to B in your own county. But when it comes down to county level, at the higher level, even uh, provincial level in terms of club activity, that's when your video analysis and that work like that there comes into play. So you know. What, what forward, their key forwards, what their strengths, what their weaknesses, and you can yeah. sort of guide it, the, the, the danger player to their weaker side. And it's, that's yeah. another element of a game that, that ladies football we're, we're starting to really improve on as well. So let's look at a few activities, guys. Let's finish off with a few activities. Let's show you. I'm sure you came for, for ideas. So we have about, I'd say, 15 ideas. Now, in our previous webinar, we have more ideas. So we took out a few of those ones and we kind of took out the, the, the probably more simpler versions. And I'll show you where we've done that. So you can go back to our webinar and look at those activities if you want. If you're particular with under sixes, eights, tens, you want an idea how to break it down even further, there's a few good ideas there. So, Kiran, um, the first one here from the side, if you want to, I think yeah. we've kind of gone through it, but I, I, I'll let it play there for you. Yeah, just playing it. So the the girl in, in the left who's the attacker, obviously, she's uh, with the ball. The girl in the green, you can see she's got the near hand in. You can see her timing, folks. Okay, she has her eyes in the ball. Just play it one more time, Will. Okay, she doesn't jump in. She takes her time and just, when that girl is about to bounce her shoulder of the ball, she puts the near hand in and dispossesses the ball. Probably the only thing maybe, Will, that she didn't bring it in her own path, but again, that can be a progression. Again, that can be done static, Will, for the younger age groups so that they can get used to it and then it can progress to more game game type of scenarios. That's brilliant, Kiran. So if it were younger age groups, they could do it walking, mm -hmm. tapping the ball, walk, four steps, tap, four steps, tap. You can do it jogging, where you just knock the ball out of the hand and then you can progress it on. All those clips are in our previous webinar. Give a look at them, okay? I, there's a few people on from Dublin Town. I think there's a few from Fox Rock Cabin Teeley. I wonder, do you recognize the top? 
I leave that one with you. Okay, the, the next one here is from a disadvantage. So remember the, 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 the Mayo player. So if you want to practice where girls are kind of running at a disadvantage to get the near hand, simple activity again and again, whereby let the girl stand, start from 10 meters behind. But watch the, the girl here in the Navy and how she, she doesn't dive in. She, she waits and she waits and she waits and she gets the tackle in at the very end. So let's watch it. So again, simple activity we can do in all our sessions. Do this in every session, or it could be a warm up. It could be very simple. She didn't delay. She waited. She waited, and then look, she's that desire and commitment, and she taps the ball away. Very you know, can interesting. I, can I just add on that there? Like them are game changing moments. Like people get praised for putting the ball over the bar or scoring a goal in the last minute. That as a defender, when that forward's about to pull the trigger and getting that. Last tackle in that that for me because I played as a defender my whole life that for me is is, is worth three or four points in it than that goal that the girl scores in the last minute. But also yeah. too though that could be a defender coming out with the ball, the forward being five meters behind her yeah. catches up with her, dispossesses yeah. her. Now you're bang on the attack straight away. So don't underestimate the importance of all this regarding forwards and defenders. So uh, Kiron, if you want to take this one here, yeah, just an air hand tackle from the front. So. The girl, you see, she doesn't jump in well. So the girl in the green is the defender, just played again for well. She, she's staggering her footwork, okay? So she gets a near hand in just one last time with straight away. So she's got her eyes on the ball, she's intent. You see straight away, folks, they're paused. You see her eyes on the ball, she's got the open hand, and she's about, the, the girl in the navy has presented the ball, and then the young girl in the green, she just gets that opportunity, the open hand to get the ball down. And again, Kieran, it goes back to just these. We just said we show these again. I know they're in the previous webinar. We just said yeah, we show yeah. them again because these are simple activities to practice technique, get mm -hmm. technique right. You know, get used to you know tapping the ball away with no pressure on. So always practice the technique. The technique is key. Head, hands, feet, uh, and just getting used to doing the tackle. Here's a warm up that you could do with any age group, uh, and I do this actually with, with with any age group that I'm with, um, and we're just kind of a warm up. Here they go. Here they go. So. Just again, look at the footwork. Just getting used to stepping in. So we always advocate with players to practice while moving. So stepping in, touching the ball with the near hand. Stepping in, touching the ball, okay? So again, both hands are just getting used to it. It's a good little warm-up to have. Uh, just used to the various techniques of touch hand. Okay, watch it here. Now we're getting used to knocking the ball away. Again, it's just very simple. You could do this as a warm-up in every session. Every session, get into pairs, girls. Off we go, get a ball. Let's practice our tackling technique. Off we go. This is yeah, so well, it's, it's so important to get like, like the ball has to be at the center of everything during your warm up. You know, you're doing a bit of skill work of solo and high catch, and you can do a bit of tackling there. You can do a bit of uh, wrestling with the ball. There's so many progressions and activities you could do in the warm up that you think that you have to do in the main body of your training session. This is what I'm saying, Kiron. You could do this every session. Very simplistic, just mm -hmm. keep reminding what good tackling looks like. Because I always say, the team with the ball will more than likely win the game. The team without the ball won't. So we need to get the ball more. In order to get the ball off, and we need to be tackled well without yeah. giving away. And when you're chasing the ball, you only expend an energy the whole time. <laughs> yeah. you know? Okay, Kiran, Jackie. Yeah, so one. the Jackie one, guys. So we just played the video. Well. So this one here, it's unopposed, folks. So you're just getting the young girl to show the hand position, the footwork. So she's leading with the right hand and right foot. So she's shuffling right and left. And in this, in this video also, coaches, we're trying to guide the player onto the weaker side. So you see the young girl is shuffling right, shuffling left. She's got her eyes on the ball. She's maintaining good balance at all times. And again, this can be done very, very simply, unopposed, and then obviously introduce the player on the ball uh, after the second progression. And now in the previous webinar, guys, as I said, we actually have that, we bought that, back one or two more steps but they didn't, yeah. we've even made it more simpler but for mm -hmm. tonight because we want to get into the other activities we just said so the improving out the technique of your body positioning feet even simple activities like this and trust me guys when you get back with your players in the field i can guarantee you when you ask players to do this they will struggle they will struggle because they're not used to going backwards they'll probably turn their back to the defender so and well just, don't be afraid right. as coaches like if you're back trying this whenever we do get back to the green light to get on our training fields. If parents are maybe standing, saying, what in the hell is William Harmon doing with them girls? Are they doing Irish dancing? Are they doing ballet? Okay, but it's important to have that, that the footwork is key and the balance and the, whole, the fundamental movements that, that are hopefully incorporated under six, eight hands, that when it comes down to 14, under 16, it's natural. 
it's it just natural. comes natural. Yeah. And think about if you're with the under sixes or eights or tens tonight. Think of all the tag games that you have to play. Yeah. You have to go from one side to the other side. You can bring in the idea straight away. Guys, you got to tattle, guys. Don't be tattling square on. Make sure you're at an angle when you're tattling. I give you an extra point if you tattle with your near hand to the person's body. Like all those things, guys, ingrain from an early onset how to tattle properly, but having fun. But they don't know they're doing that, but you're just dropping the seeds there. Uh, Regarding you could, this one, yeah. Um, yeah, you could, you could play that tag game for a full 45 minutes. Well, the, wee, the under sixes love it. <laughs> They'd love you it. Tell, tell them out. So the one-to-one here, guys. So this is practicing just with a player in the ball. So yeah. I've asked the player here. So the girl in green, we've taken away. We said, listen, just bounce the ball only for this. Just bounce it because I want the player in, in Navy to practice tackling and jockeying. Okay, so we modified the game to suit it. So watch it. She tried to get there, but she's going to get it now. So again, it's just another simple activity that you can get the player. But I, instead, of, I took it away from the forward. It's not about the forward. You just bounce the ball all the way up. I just want the defender to jockey, getting used to wait for the time. Wait for your opportunity to She tried there. No, no, no. I'll wait. I'll wait now. So every four steps, the player has to do something. So just getting into the idea of that. Also, um, building that there, you're building the defender's confidence up as well. I know yeah. you're, you're asking the young girl to just take four steps and bounce, but it's about confidence for a defender or confidence. for any position of the field to get that tackle. And once they get it, they will build on week on week. And, and, you, and you're right, Kieran, on that one. Like, you know, in terms of that confidence, that confidence and self confidence, I can do this. Kieran, yeah. I think this is your one. Yeah, that's a bit, yeah. So this one here, guys, a wee bit more of a progression. So it's just a, a 15 or 20 by 20 meter square. So the, the Navy kicks the young girl in green. Okay, and the young girl in green has to try and make it to the yellow cones. Just play it again, well. So she's trying to shadow her out, okay? The young girl in green, guys, is predominantly left-footed. So just play it one more time, well. So she wants to get her on the right side, and as soon as she goes to bounce or maybe hop the ball, you can see the girl in navy, her timing, she's just got in, and she used the near hand. It wasn't the forehand that time. It was excellent in the way she was patient, and bang, just there, she flicks the ball all the way away from the path of the forward. And again, we manipulated the, the actual yeah, the, the, the yeah. session. So there's four cones. We've told the girl in the green, you've got to get to the yellow cone. You've got to get to the yellow cone on the same side. And we told the defender, you need to stop her from going to the yellow cone. So I thought that was very interesting. And these girls are only 14 years of age. But look at this. Look at the way she was um, guiding the player down to the, the side here. Look, watch it. Watch it here. So therefore, she took the line. She said to the player, I'm going to get your head down. And I'm going to push you somewhere where you don't want to go. And look what happened. She's predominantly left-legged, the girl in green, couldn't sold the right leg, so therefore the girl in navy had her now. Okay, so I think that's a good drill in terms yeah. of understanding that. And just seeing from terms of coaches, well, there are a lot of people are asking, are these videos available, are these slides available? Try and get still pictures, or if you can do a video session during lockdown now of getting images or getting videos of the skill, the technique of the near-hand tackle, so it's ingrained in a young girl's head, so when who maybe come back and April for your argument's sake, well, that here, there's the hand position, there's the feet position, here's where my balance should be, here's all the elements that I need to get to, to time this really important tackle. So it's, you can do stuff now in the off-season just because we're not on the field, well, there's loads yeah, of stuff you can do your players. Stuff. Yeah, and you know what, tell your players give a listen to this webinar, go on away and mm. listen to, and you yeah. know what, you know what, will you all in the Zoom call next week, can you tell me two, things he learned, two or three things he learned from watching it? Why not use these? These are all on our YouTube channel. Now we're coming to new games, guys, okay, so I know it's Mick Bohan on, on, on tonight, he's a, he's a good guy, the Dublin senior manager for ladies football, uh, very into complex skills and promoting complex skills, but here is a situation whereby put them into pairs give one player two balls and one player's a tackler so the player with two balls why are you giving her two balls you kind of say she has to sort of her left or right all the time okay but what you're promoting is that the girl who's tackling is using her near hand every time that she's sold off her left she has to position her body with her near hand and position her body the opposite side when she's got uh, sold with the left hand so it's not about the player on the ball in this one it's more about the tackler and just getting used to tackling with both hands and can she dispossess the player can she dispossess both footballs off the player and it's just McBowen is a very good one with the complex skills guys I would promote it big time work in terms of he's done a lot of great work there in relation to YouTube there's a lot of YouTube clips out there as well and what mm -hmm. Mick does but I definitely think this is a good way that it's not about the forward the forward using two footballs but the tackler trying to use I suppose trying to dispossess two footballs but getting the idea of actually shuffling off the left and off the right and also using both sides of the body keep on yeah 
Okay, um, this one on the goals. Uh, okay, here we go. The 1v1. Let's watch it. So again, the girl in the navy is right-legged. Okay, but look what the girl in the green does. She cuts off the right side and pushes her down the left side because the girl in navy is not comprehend off the left leg. So that's the girl thinking now. She's thinking, if I go straight for her, She'll be able to, go. she now has two options, go left or right of me. But the girl in the, in the white or in the, in, the, in the gray said, no, 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 I'm going to cut off the option she wants to go. I'll push her where she wants to go and I'll dispossess her. So again, just another, another kind of, look, watch it again. Look, here we go. She knows she's right legged. So she wants to come across, kick it over the bar. She comes up the, the left side. She look, head is down. Now she has her. She didn't know what to do because she's to sold her right leg. She couldn't sold her left. She was caught. Kieran. What's yeah, and see, see, on that activity, well, it's it's probably important, but with this discussion during the week, and the coaches were putting in the survey, give us games and drills and activities. It's probably it's a tough one to get some of games to develop the tackle, but on this here, and it's it's a drill, and it's a one v one that can progress to two v one or two v two. Always try and finish for a score. You can see Will's got the wee portable goals there in the backyard, and okay, it's important that the forward has a focus. Yet that we are trying to go for a goal. And that the defender in their in their position is is defending and, and, and blocking the space out. So always, if you're doing drills, guys, always try and finish on a score. Make it game related. Make it game related. Have a score. Have a, you could be small side, but have a goal. Yeah. Okay. Who's attacking? Yeah. Who's defending? Yeah, let's go. We've a, we've about nine more to go through, and these yeah. are all new ones. So let's see how we get on, Kieran. Okay. Yeah. So this is a V19 device, folks. You might have seen it before. So the two yellows on the left of the screen. Okay, they're attacking. They're attacking unopposed. So there's nobody tackling them. So once the two yellows attack folks into the wee port of goals, uh, the black port of goals as we have on our screen here, once they attack the two purples, okay, on either side of the post, they come and defend. So the yellows attack unopposed to go for a goal. As soon as the yellows attack folks, they become defenders and the two purples are attacking them, okay? So again, when the two purples are attacking to the left of our screen, and we'll have young girls in their nets, okay, port of goals or agility pose, whatever you have at the club, Okay, whenever the two purples attack and score, okay, they're in the back front again and then they're defending. So it's called as soon as you attack, you defend straight away. It's a great big game. You can set up maybe three or four lead zones uh, around the pitch, okay, depending on your squad and money you have. Okay, you're working, you can split the group into six, eight, whatever your numbers are, and they're working maybe for a minute and a half, two minutes, okay, real high intensity, but still getting the good principles in of the of the front of the tackle, the time and the patience. Yeah, that that collective working the gas a pair as well. So we're, we've built it up from one v one to two v two here. And we a lot of us times, guys, we do these drills, but there's we don't really know why we're doing. Well, it's it's all attacking, it's all it's all defending. But I would say here, the specific focus we're doing here tonight is I'm watching the defend the players off the ball. So what we're doing tonight here is we're focused on the players off the ball. I'm watching how you tattle. I'm watching how you communicate. So here is a very good way of keep the, 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 the actual area small to mm -hmm. promote good tattling. That's why you're doing it. Let the, you know, the forwards can do what they want to do tonight, but it's about off the ball, how we're tattling, how we're tattling well. You know? Yeah, it's just like a wee, a wee tw sorry, well, a, a, roughly a 15 or... 20 by 20 meters uh, square set out, and it's 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 a great week game exactly. And I, and I like that game because it's continuous. So we we attack, okay, then we defend. So you have to react. So Mentally, it, well, you have to be switched on as well. You have your yeah. job done when you score, but no, you have to switch on defense straight away. And that's what we're trying to incorporate into our forwards. Yeah, if the ball is turned over by the cornerback or the halfbacks, exactly, you just don't let them to set up a counter attack. No. You defend straight You're away. You're now a defender, hundred percent. Yeah. Next yeah. one there, Kieran. Yeah. So the no central one. Okay. So the, the three yellows in the middle of the again little uh, small side of game, twenty by twenty meter square or fifteen, whatever you want to set up in your pitch. So the three yellows are defenders. They're going to stay in for roughly maybe a minute, a minute and a half. So to the right of our screen with three three purples. So they're going to attack with three yellows. It's a three v three situation. But what we're trying to guide, okay, we're trying to guide our yellows, are trying to guide the players onto the weak side. So move them either out to the right or out to the left. But at the same time, we want to keep our centre compact. We don't want to leave our centre of a field, okay, which is the danger zone, as I call it. We don't leave it open, okay? So there's a player in the left-hand side of the screen might try and drag this player out of position, and I call it just a dummy run or a dead player. They're just trying to drag that uh, defender out of position. But as a defensive unit, as well as said, our communication, our timing, our teamwork must be crucial that we're trying to guide them away from the centre, either out to the left or out to the right. And again, that takes a lot of time, patience, teamwork, 
all the qualities of a good team that you're trying to build up from a very, very young age. So when it comes to that senior club or senior inter-county player, it just looks so natural and flows. Yeah. And with that one, going back to what we learned earlier on, the player on the ball, think about it. So we're trying to make the player on the ball to make the wrong decision. Mm -hmm. So try and get that player's head down, push them where they want to go. As a group of three, then stay center, okay? Stay center or hold that center or push them to one side or offload to another side. And it's just getting players to think about what we did in the last session about making better decision makers. Pause and say, listen, why are you following that player over there when she's be, we, no no harm at all maybe then that group ethic and that group tactic because sometimes when you push a player down the wing or into a corner maybe that's an opportunity to squeeze and turn over the player from a group tackling perspective well I'm going to be devil's advocate here sorry just throw it back there right yeah. we're always in grade there are young girls or young players from a young age you go man to man you play your marker player no matter what so if the if the purple player does make a dead run or a, a, a run that's trying to drag a defender out of position how do we ingrain that into our young girls under 14, under 12, that, listen, you must stay together as a unit? Does that, so what if they make a mistake at under 14, under 16, does it matter? 100%. And I think that comes back to the scenarios you, you, you develop in your games and getting them probably to the Joe. And that goes back to decision makers and asking those open questions. Do you mm. feel by following her, just stop it, even if you pause the game, say, look where you're standing now, you're, you're 20 meters away from us. And look where the player is with the ball. Is she going to get the ball across? More than likely not yeah. in that scenario. So instead of being right beside her, why don't you just you know come in a small bit and close that that distance? So again, it's open questioning, pausing games, and getting players to start thinking that, early. That anticipation, but well, is very very important. Yeah, but if we don't if we don't coach that in our in our training sessions and don't get players to probably stand, look around, ask open questions of them, and get them to challenge their thinking, you, you never make them better decision makers. That instance. Here's this one. So you've two lanes set up in front of the goals, okay? And basically, what you do is the girl in yellow is the girl on the left lane. The girl in purple or in pink is the she's she's actually right legged. But straight away, the defender starts in the, in the channel that the player wants to go into. Okay, so you're going to push her into the far channel. And let's see, can you keep her in that channel? Can you push her down the side? And if she turns, can you tackle her when she hops her solo? Now, if she's only right-legged, you will be able to tackle her fairly handy because you're near hand, you'll be able to get her because she'll want to turn. She'll be very uncomfortable like the girl earlier on. So the aim of this game is, can you keep the player in the zone that she doesn't want to be in? She wants to get across to her far zone because that's her dominant, her dominant side. So her objective is to get a score through the lane, but the girl, the defender starts in the lane that she doesn't want to go or that she wants to go into first of all again it's just utilizing that idea of pushing on to the area where she doesn't want to go hold squeeze her and then turn her over okay and um, this one here uh we're just moving on 1v1 to 4v1 okay so in this scenario here guys we have four pinks with the ball four pinks with the ball and four yellows with no ball on the whistle it's a small area on the whistle everybody takes one person to tackle so they all go in and they tackle their player they have to tackle properly wait for the right time when they uh, push the ball away from their from their um, from their attacker or their opposition, they go help someone else in. So by the end of it, you have one player on the ball and you have four tattlers. So it's promoting, not diving in, not tattling or committing a foul. Okay, it's one to one tackling, but then you're going to two v one, three v one, four v one. By the end of it, you have one person that's going to be tackled by four. But can they do it as a group without? committing a foul so again it's that it's just another the, way of the, the group defending well as you as, as we touched on earlier on the group defending that's what the, the coaches want to see and how, how it has developed so it's, it's an excellent one and we'll finish off with a great one at the very end in terms of group defending yeah. and how you get back and support each other this one here guys so it's 1v1 okay in the square so on the outside of the again the the 20 by 20 or 15 by 50 meter square whatever the case may be so you have eight players on the outside of the square okay of the the blue square and you have four players with the ball. So inside the, the 15 by 15 meter square, you have four pairs, okay? So the yellows, we just say the yellows in this instance, instance sorry, are the attackers. So a yellow receives the ball from a player on the outside, and once they receive the ball from the player on the outside, they have to go through the center of the square to the opposite side and give the ball to a player who, give the ball to someone who hasn't got a, give the ball to someone who's not holding the ball, okay? So what we're trying to encourage is here, the yellow must take the defender on. They have to take the defender on. 
the defender again obviously is not allowed to commit a foul. If the defender dispossesses the ball, they get a point. These pairs in the middle guys are going to roughly work for a minute and a half, and this is really, really tough work. They work for a minute and a half. If the blue, out of, say, four attacks, gets the ball across to the, the opposite side, they get four points. And again, vice versa. If the yellow dispossesses the blue and tackles well, they get the point. And then at the end, you total up your points. It's a wee mini competition within each other, a 1v1. Again, there's a great, great, wee, drill, great wee exercise okay, to get that tackle in. If you, you're trying to focus on the, the front attack and become that your face on, okay. But if it do get past you, like the video clip we showed early on, if the girl does gain five or ten yards, and you, you can still get back and get that near hand tackle in at the very, very last minute yeah. before she offloads the ball. You're really promoting that 1v1 there. You're really promoting that player. So you're saying to Tanner, take on the defender because we want our defenders to be better defenders. Mm. In order to be better defenders, or sorry, better, better tattlers, then we need to mimic what we happens in the game so i always advocate in sessions take on the player always in your mind take on the player because while you're doing that you're going to make our your your teammate a better tattler because she will have to tattle uh within the rules of the game on this one kiran yeah the cover defender so again it's not a it's not a way you want in groups of four or six whatever your numbers may be so the right hand side of the screen you have the the purple player she starts off the ball okay and in a small grid Meter 10 by 10 meter square. You have three 10 by 10 meter squares back to back. Okay, so you have two defenders in each square. So the girl with the ball, the ball player, has to attack the first defender. Okay, so the defender is also trying to guide her to the weaker side outside the square. If she does guide her outside the square, the defender in this instance wins a point. But there's always a but in football. If the attacker in purple beats that defender, and more than likely she will if she's clued on and she knows her, her weaker side, and maybe the defender's footwork isn't in position. That defender then has to make ground and get back into the third square and be the cover defender. Okay, so just because they're beat here one on one, it's like they're like half forward, maybe getting beat in the game and say, Oh, I'm just going to give up. They can still make ground and get back into the half back position and help your teammates out. So it's about getting that effort back to the Mio Cup again. Well, let's like see, it's honesty of effort after. This player in yellow is beat in the top square. She has to make that honesty of effort to get back into the last square and be the cover defender and help her team in front of her. So again, great one for uh, cover defender and brings in that 1v1 to then a 2v1 situation eventually. Excellent. Okay, this one here. Yeah, that's mine. Yeah, this one here, guys. So again, another really small side of game. It starts off at 2v2. So up in the top left-hand screen, you can see the two purples have the ball. Okay, and again, it's a 20 by 20 meter uh, field with the agility pose as our nets. Okay, so the two purples have the ball. They have to make a, maybe a 15-yard run down the sideline. They cut in through the middle of the, the agility pose, your football nets, okay? At the same time, the two yellows on the near side of the football field, two yellow defenders, they make effort and they go right down the middle Cutting through the agility pose, it becomes a 2v2. As soon as your two purples have maybe went five or ten yards in front of the goals, the two go the two girls on the either agility pose can join in. So then instead of becoming a 2v2, it becomes a 4v4 game. Okay. Again, guys, you can you can progress this or regress this depending on, on how the game fares out. Instead of putting in uh, four attackers, you can put in four defenders. So we're trying to get the, uh, the emphasis is this is all about tackling right, and our, our defensive shape and how we do tackle well. So instead of doing 4v4, you can give the advantage to the four yellows. So have four defenders and then just maybe ask one girl just to set this one out to see how it develops again. Again, it's a great way activity that you can split your field up into three or four parts and have the whole panel working on that together. Again, it's important that the coaching points are reinforced that you, as well as says you stop it, that you have your team of coaches with you and saying, listen, where should your hands have been there? Should you maybe shuffle left, shuffle right? Should you guide her on their weaker side? Were you off balance in that last phase of the game? And question your players. Just don't tell them, Sophie or Siobhan, listen, you jumped in late there. Your hands were maybe in the wrong side, okay? Ask the players the questions and get them to think for themselves. And then that will help them with their decision making on the field. Excellent. I suppose the last two before we finish off in terms of the help defending. So here's one here in terms of the A and B. So A passes the ball to B. So B is on her own now on this one. So you kind of use the sideline as your friend and you've got the goals. So C and D are going to tackle B. So A gives the ball to B. B 
B runs down, obviously, the sideline. Now, at the same time, when she gets the ball, C and D are going after her. So the object of the game is that they're not to allow her to go inside to go for the goal. So obviously, the aim of C is to keep her pushing down the line so that she'll turn. Okay, and then D will be come in as a help defender to probably tackle the ball or tackle the player. So we're working on a 2-1, 2v1 one, two one scenario whereby C is kind of keeping B down the sideline and where D is coming in to, as a help defender on that one. And how do we progress that on? Whereby then A gives the ball to B, the both of them work together to try and get a score and C and D work together to try and stop them. Again, the idea is that when B gets the ball, C tries to get her to get her head down to keep her pushing down the line and that then D is going to stop the support ball when she turns. So when she turns, there's no support ball. So that's the idea around this scenario whereby you're trying to stop them to get inside to get into the score. But again, it's the defender or the tackler making the decision for the player. This is where I want you to go and we're just going to wait until we're going to tackle you then. Okay, so... I'm just conscious of time. So I'm just going to show you this scenario, guys, before we finish. And we'll just see how could it have been so different uh, based on what we learned tonight. So we hope those games and stuff helped you out. But give a look at this. I want you to look at the, the midfielder here, number eight. I want you to look at number seven. And I want you to look at number 15, who's an extra defender back here. Based on what you learned tonight, what advice would you give these players? Okay, off you go. So on the chat function, it's the last slide, guys, our last few slides, in terms of what advice would you give these two players? Okay, so let's, what we learned tonight. So the midfielder, what advice would you give number eight? What advice would you have given number seven? And what advice would you give number 15, who is the corner forward making the decision? Here we go. We'll just go one more time. Again, based on what we learned tonight in terms of tackling and probably making the wrong decisions. Okay, so Kiran, is there anything coming in there? On the chat, uh, number eight, not to jump in, be patient. Excellent. So number patient. eight, so number eight, guys, knows that blue wants to get onto her right side. So straight away, she should have just shifted her body to the left of blue to say, keep going, keep going to your right. I don't want you to come this way, okay? Now, <laughs> number seven. <laughs> Telling you more connection than only, don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Number seven is here. Number seven is worried about number 10 out here. As I said, go back to what we said earlier on. Number 10 is out of the game. Not in the game, not interested, okay? But look, when she turns, number seven, tell me, where do you think number seven should be? Okay, so the midfielder has missed her. She's allowed her to turn, okay? All right? So what has happened now? What should number seven do? Let's watch it. Look at her positioning. Her positioning now, she's caught flat-footed. She's square. now square. She's now square. She now is caught totally to the left and side. So now she's going to try and grapple and try and challenge her with her far hand. Look what happens. Free. Because she's lunging now. She's lunging. So basically what she could have done there, and I'll just show you guys. Here it is. If she even stood even two, one meter to the right of, of the blue pair, she would have pushed her down the line. But mm -hmm. because she was so worried about number 10, she was cut off position. So that's just a learning there for that as well. But watch this one, guys, just to finish it off. This is the good one. This is our corner forward. Sorry. Here's our corner forward. Here it is, guys. This is our corner forward. No, this is number 15. Here she is. Number 15. We spoke about who's the best tackler on the team. This is number 15 plays as an extra player back. Watch. So Ashley Maloney is coming at her at 100 miles an hour. What happens again? She dives in. She's <laughs> caught square. And I can guarantee you, she'll commit the second foul. Foul. Okay. But... Look at number eight. Look at the look at the game Kiran played earlier on about the help to Finney, about you know, the, the boxes. And you, okay, you, you didn't get her the first time, but you know what? Go around and try and get her the second time. Because number eight kept running, look where she pushed Ashling out to the wing. Now the ball is no danger. But if that midfielder just stood in the middle of the park and did nothing, I can guarantee you, Ashley would have went straight for goal and probably could have got a, a free closer to goal. So just, just a bit of learning on, on a game context and what we're trying to do tonight. So to finish off, guys, in, in relation to deliberate contact, high cat tackle and charging, just to let you know, on our YouTube channel, we actually have a specific video on charging and actually a narrative of what it looks like. It also goes through what a high tackle is and what deliberate uh, charge is. So that deliberate contact, guys, in ladies football, as we said, there's no deliberate contact. Okay, if it's deliberate, it's a free. Okay, so how do we coach our players, every player, to be better tacklers without giving away a free? 
The high tattle is above the chest area, guys. So again, if you're caught square footed, you're going to give it a free away by putting your hands out because it's above chest height. So it could be a yellow card of fint. So if it's if it's if there's movement and force and intent, then it's going to be a red card of fence. But there are more on the last webinar, guys, and we did a bit more on the in the YouTube channel as well. So give a look at them. So the movement and the intent and the enforce are three things that the court that the referees look at in terms of deeming it a foul or not regarding same. Look, on our website, guys, there's loads of stuff there. Please feel free over the coming weeks to give a look. There's skills booklets, there's, there's the activities, there's the Pell magazine, there's goalkeeper resources. There's loads of stuff there. Please give a look at them. But also, guys, on our webinar, we have the coach to tattle from the last episode. There's a few more activities there that you can do. There's a specific video on the charge, and there's also our other coach education webinars. But... Before we go in the chat function, guys, put in what's your one take home point from tonight. And Kiran, if there's any questions, I'll answer them uh, yeah, if they're there. Just, but if I'm you have one take home point, guys, please um, put in the chat function and we'd love to hear what it is. Or if you have any questions, we, we, we'll just give it a few minutes. A few comments with it in terms of the drills. Can we get access to the drills? I just said no, this will be recorded if we don't It'll actually be this will we be don't email this out stuff out. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, It'll be recorded, guys, so you can access this on our LJFA YouTube channel. Actually, it's probably better to have them with the narrative with them as well. Yeah, it's just people coming in some great drills and games activities that we can use in our own sessions. But the key is, guys, why are you doing this tonight? So, sometimes we play these games. I'm sure you've probably seen all these games, and it's forwards and backs, and oh, great goal, and oh, great, oh, great. But it needs to have a specific focus. So I would say take away the noise. Take away the forward player. And I'm not looking at the forwards tonight, guys. I'm looking specifically at how we tackle as a group. Anything else, Kieran? Uh, the correct stance in terms of the footwork. Yeah, but you need to uh, practice it, though. Practice it. So one, one coach practice at each session, reinforced at each session. Guys, tackling has to be in every session. Every player needs to tackle, even the goalkeeper. A goalkeeper is going to be in a one-on-one -on -one scenario. Can she delay the forward coming at her for two seconds so the defender might get back in the line? Every player needs to be a good tackler. Practice it in every session. It doesn't have to take over the session. It could be part of your warm-up. Anything else, Kieran? Just there, is there any circumstance that a player... Sorry, I'm just going to back that question. Well, sorry. Is it good or... I know there's a few in the q and I'll give a look at it as well here. So yeah, was... Is there any circumstances that a player can put their hands in the arms of a girl with the ball? Example, the top, the side of the shoulders? No. No. Not no, allowed. That's context straight away. That's context straight away. So I understand. Don't get me wrong. I know that there's a lot of contact late football, but if we're Once coaching you... by the rule, you know, if you if you play uh, place a hand on the player while the ball's in the body, it's a foul within our rule. That's what our rule says. Anything else, Kieran? Tackle smartly. Patience is key. Practice, Tackle. practice, practice. Yeah, like you know. Ta technique is key. I see David Sherlock here saying about he's seen a lot of freeze from the from, from the far hand. That, that's how we advocate the near hand, David, because you're more likely, less likely to give away a free with the near hand tattle. You've got better balance, better reach. What's the website again, Ed? Ed it's LJFA YouTube channel. So even if you put into Google, LJFA YouTube channel, all our webinars are there. And we actually have a, another webinar on this as well uh, earlier from last year. So yeah. Any ideas on how communicate, defenders communicate to each other? Yes. I would say, Adrian, with this one, have the buzzwords. What are the buzzwords you want to say? So, you know, push. Okay, engage, engage, engage. That means you're telling the person nearest the tackler to engage the player on the ball. So engage, engage, okay? Or shuffle across, shuffle across. You're telling your player that, forget the player who's on the far side, shuffle across and let's squeeze the space. So Adrian, I would say there is, use buzzwords as a group to communicate in terms of what you're trying to get across. Anything else, Kiran? I'm just copying the link here. Sorry, Will, bear with me. So the video is Mar Maria. Yeah, they'll be all on our YouTube channel. And I know you said go back one slide, but hopefully you can get back on, on the on the webinar again. So I'm just giving a look to see if there's anything else in the chat function, guys. Um, so we hope you enjoyed tonight. Can you answer anything else? Is there no oh, show? Sure. Yes. So Padre in, in Galway, um, there's no show. You cannot shoulder in ladies football. You cannot shoulder in ladies football. It's that's deliberate contact. 
That's deliberate content. It's a free against. In our last webinar, Paul Drake, I have a video on that. So give a look at our last uh, webinar. I actually have a video on that. Sorry, well, that's what I was just getting the YouTube link to our uh, YouTube channel and putting it in the uh, chat function there for the coaches. Yeah. Some people weren't sure where it is, but loads of information there on our website, as you said, Will. Yeah, so basically, guys, we hope you enjoyed tonight. Um, we kept it in the 70 minutes. We, did, uh, we hope you learned a bit. And I hope, uh, you know, as again, there's another webinar as well. It kind of goes into more detail on certain aspects. So give a look at that as well on the title. We hope you found tonight informative. Thank you, Kieran. I really enjoyed tonight. I hope Thank you me. enjoyed tonight. Um, so again, guys, we'll be back again on the 23rd with our, uh, I suppose, how to, I suppose, improve tactics in ladies football. We'll be looking very much at our, our level two program. So we hope we have you back in again uh branded north stay safe and um stay well good night